Good morning. Thank you for your work and this opportunity. I am Amy Hamlin, Executive Director of the Coalition for Healthy School Food. We help schools around the country introduce plant-based foods to cafeteria menus and provide nutrition education. We are proud to have a formal partnership with New York City, the nation's largest school district. The USDA school meal programs are based on the US dietary guidelines. Thus, positive changes to the guidelines will influence the 30 million meals served each day in our nation's schools. First, I want to emphasize the importance of meat alternatives, especially beans, lentils, tofu, and tempeh, and request that the guidelines place more emphasis on plant-based main dishes. Plant-based entrees are a healthy choice for all children, but most schools are not offering any other than PB&J. What is common on school menus is processed meat, such as deli slices, pepperoni, sausage, and hot dogs. But processed meats are classified as group A carcinogens by the World Health Organization. They have no place in our diet. Since many children count on school meals for their nourishment, and children are more susceptible to carcinogens than adults, we ask the committee to discourage the consumption of processed meats and plainly state that they cause cancer. Second, we urge you to remove dairy as a food group. Schools are required to offer milk, but research shows that milk does not offer, build strong bones. What's more, people of color have high rates of lactose intolerance. Humans simply have no need for milk past the age of weaning, much less milk from another species, for our guidelines to be encouraging consumption by people whose normal biology does not tolerate it is frankly a form of racial bias. Another common problem is chronic constipation in children from undiagnosed dairy allergies. So we encourage you to remove the dairy as a food group and add a calcium group and encourage greens, beans, and other high calcium plant foods as well as exercise for bone strength. At the very least, the guidelines should promote the inclusion of non-dairy milks wherever cow's milk is offered. Third, we recommend the guidelines address the issue of processed foods because unfortunately, limits on calories, sodium, and fat still leave too much room for artificial and fiber deficient ingredients. Virtually all foods displayed at school food expos are processed. At a recent conference where we served main dishes made from scratch, one employee of a food company said to me, I don't mean to be a wise guy, but you're actually cooking food. What are you selling? I told him we're selling good health. Finally, I want to urge the committee to consider the role of animal agriculture on the climate crisis in your recommendations. Thank you for your attention to these important matters, which could make a huge difference for all people in the United States, especially our nation's children. Be sure to hit that subscribe button for more highlights and information about the changing dietary guidelines in 2020, an exclusive analysis you won't find anywhere else on YouTube. And make sure to hit that notification bell too so you don't miss the next video. Y'all know what time it is. Red Pill Vegan. Next.